Hello, so I wanted to jump on uh, just to do a bit of an impromptu message because I've been meaning to record something about spiritual crisis for a while. Um, it's like a follow-on to a dark night of the soul, but it's kind of bigger. And I feel that it, it's like the times that we're in right now, uh, the times of spiritual crisis through to spiritual enlightenment. But a spiritual crisis comes along when you need to question absolutely everything that you believe in. And it, it's more grounded on the spiritual path or the soul's path because you've already kind of had the awakening. You've had the dark night where uh, it's like a soul loss and your life isn't working for you. And or you've had a breakdown, a breakup or, you know, a lot of things. You've lost a job, lost a family member. Um, all those big things in life that come to shake your foundations and put you through a dark night of the soul. But a spiritual crisis tends to come afterwards when you're rebuilding your life and you're trying to make sense of where you are and what you've learned and who you are. And it often calls in a time of great change because there's a an unrest period. And I, I also feel it's very rife with the times that we're in now because we're having to be catapulted into this great awakening. And as I say this, there's an alarm going off. <laughs> warning, warning, uh, big things are going on on the planet in spirituality, in soul's consciousness, all of it. It's a huge time of reckoning and waking up. And for some it's like, whoa, I didn't know the world looked like that. And I think that's pretty much happening to us all. Like, kind of being curious and questioning absolutely everything right now. Because we are in, I don't want to say it dismally, but we're in the end times. And by the end times, I mean the times before we can birth in anything new everything has to dissolve and for me there is a lot of good things finally happening I really do believe we're in the year of revelation so a lot of things are going to come to the surface to be looked at a lot of things are going to be revealed that we're in the shadows in secret uh, in places where they were hidden and the thing is if they're going on anyway they've got to come to the surface because we can't live in a world where we are being complicit to stuff that we don't want happening and it we all know everything needs to change but then there's a level of spiritual crisis that comes in and I've been through this a few times where I've realized that I, I was an energy healer and I didn't know how to protect myself from like entities and psychic attack and I didn't really understand this fourth dimension but then there's also the teachings. Now, I was taught to channel, channel clear source. But actually, what I'm realizing is that we're often taught to channel these uh, named beings. Let's take the example of Isis. Uh, the, there's a, a movement, a priestess movement and a feminine movement to channel this goddess. But actually, when you look into um, it deeply, you look into the occult mysteries who were always channeling and working with Horus and Isis and calling in these ages. Uh, the occult had a big awareness of this. And there was a following of dark magical practices that were channeling this goddess Isis. And the temples were destroyed and burnt out. And then you have these... Uh, myths of this degrading, pulling apart of the body and a bird-headed being that was Isis coming into play. And you look at that big myth and then wonder whether there's some sort of trickery or deeper story being told in here that Isis might not be a pure lineage. And I talk about this quite a bit and I use the name of Set because for me that is tapping into the golden frequency. But I feel that that's the same with everybody. I mean, no matter what energy you're, you're worshipping or revering or calling upon, is it the divine energy or is it a trickster energy? Is it an archangel that is actually a fallen angel? Are you working with a, a, a Magdalene lineage that isn't a pure lineage? Is it part of a, a, a dropped consciousness? 
And so I bring this into awareness because this is the level of a spiritual crisis where you have to question all of your practices, all the people that have been teaching you things or the places that you go to to learn things and actually come back into your own your own body wisdom, your own gnosis of what you really feel because there is a big astral realm, a fourth dimension out there which is full of dropped consciousness beings, entities. There is a history of the archons, uh, if you want to go down the Gnostic lineage. Uh, there's, you know, it, it's written about in all the books about the fallen lineages. There's work about you know, Anuaki out there. And interestingly, even people that write about Anuaki may have been from a dropped consciousness. So it's worth, and very much worth now, questioning absolutely everything. And the best way to come to a neutral, calm place with a spiritual crisis, because you don't want to go into a, a fear state or a, a disempowered state. And a disempowered state is when you're channeling, giving it over to someone else, saying, save me, help me, I don't know what to do. Because that is making you rife for an energy attack. When an embodied, sovereign, spiritual practice is, I am in my light, now what frequencies do I trust? What can I tap into? I am in my light. What, how do I feel the frequency of other teachings, other practices? Do they feel right? I'm in my light. So even if I'm in a container where some people are being infiltrated with a different drop consciousness, I can protect myself and stay sovereign in this space because I am in my light. And that is a, a great affirmation and a practice to use um, because it's... It's rife everywhere and I feel what's coming up into collective consciousness is all the different psychic attack, energy attack, entities. But while saying all this, we have a responsibility to stay in our sovereign light. As much as there is all of this realm going on, there's also a much higher frequency. There is a pure source, love, light, energy. Whatever name resonates with you, use that name if it resonates here in the heart and brings you into a higher energetic frequency. And for me, it always comes back down to energy and the frequency. Because if it's a frequency of like love and heart-based consciousness, then it's not a dropped consciousness. And I think this is the most important thing to come back to. Because when you expand and become aware of all these different realms and the dark agenda and all the things that are playing out, it can be very easy to go into fear state and anxiety and paranoia about what you're tapping into and what you're doing. And I acknowledge all of that. It's not easy to come back into a neutral state, but that is the work. That is the practice to keep coming back into alignment. Because for me, spirituality or anything of the soul is all about a frequency an energetic frequency so it's less about having like named or uh, you know worship of any being or deity it's more about feeling the frequency of uh, a, a unity consciousness a, a united field of energy and a high vibration of uh love and light but not in a 3d sense of love it's not like a love i've ever felt on a human level it's like a an awash of bliss ecstasy and yeah a, a frequency and i wish for everyone to feel that and if you've been on the spiritual journey there there'll be ways and tools and techniques to feel that for you uh, and that's often many practices I offer and I will actually go into a, a more feeling state frequency meditation on the end of this to to help align you with that ecstasy and bliss because I realized and I had this feedback and I have really taken that on that as much as I was charging blazing my light into the dark agenda and bringing things up to awareness and part of my 
path as a spiritual activist is to bring things into awareness. Another important part of what I do is to bring things into balance and bring the frequency back in. So it's just as important to be feeling the, the, the gracious light and the pure force energy that runs through our bodies that's rightfully ours, that has been stolen and taken and it's up to us, us powerful beings to reclaim that back. Now, while I say all that, I am not advocating in any way spiritual bypassing. And to me, spiritual bypassing turns out as in I will not look at the dark because I don't want it to lower my frequency. I will not look at the shadow because I'm not sure that that exists. Or I will mock uh, the shadow as a defensive mechanism and, and push it away. Or that trickery energy that says these darker forces don't exist in our society and that's a very cl clever cover-up and I think we're going to get more and more of this as we go through this year as we go through the months different tactics are playing out and I think it calls us to really step into our empowered state and look understand it witness it maybe even cry it out feel the grief of what has happened to humanity feel the grief of all that distorted things that lead us so far away from spirit the anti-human agenda that has people killing each other that has you know this this thing that's getting more and more apparent about all the distorted child trafficking and paedophilia and everything that is out there that just feels so anti-human and anti-life and most importantly anti-love which is the spiritual consciousness that I was talking about in the first place and so while I feel that we do need to understand this because this is how humanity did get into such a drop consciousness how it got into such a mess for my soul's lineage i see it playing out very prominently from the egyptian timelines because the egyptian timelines were steeped in magic steeped in black magic program steeped in uh, a very dropped consciousness of uh Thoth and the emerald tablets and also selling things out in a bigger way to a more artificial anti-human agenda and yeah I mean this is this is this is big and it takes quite a while to wrestle around it and maybe like me you've seen all this in your past lives trajectory maybe it's something you are going deeper into um, trying to understand I mean especially if you've had a bit of a journey into the witch lineage and witch persecution and then you've gone a little bit deeper and wondered you know was there any um satanic witchcraft out there then there is and looked into that lineage and then seen well does this lineage go older 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 yes it, it spans to the beginning of time and it's still prevalent in our society now i mean there's still people going to court for harvesting parts of organs for for practicing black magic for doing really horrific spells that's still going on to this day uh, and it's going on where it's being witnessed and caught and it's also going on uh, more underground it's really worth looking into every angle and one of the uh, you know the four front leaders who speaks about this has always been like David Icke he has some tremendous books on well and well researched on this subject and I wonder what's going to happen as more and more people sort of open up to his his wisdom his research his teachings and I say wisdom because I often have tapped into very similar things on a soul level I mean I'm not I mean, I love books. I read a lot of books. I was going to say I'm not bookish, but I'm pretty bookish. But what I tend to do with my own channeling and my own soul's journey work is I will look in uh, regression. I will do past life regressions, meditations, shamanic journeys to get into my own soul story and what I know about my witch history, uh, my Egyptian lineage, what I understand about 
the fall of magic and all I'll get this through a channeling meditative state and then uh, I ask for spiritual support to guide me into those those histories those gnosis see what else is out there and then I tend to receive the same gnosis back that people have already talked about certain subjects uh, and it's like a comforting soothing to the soul that actually there is soul brothers and sisters out there already bringing this into awareness and it makes me realize that we're kind of this tribe of spiritual light warriors who are all trying to bring these these messages forward these awakenings forward and help heal humanity because one of my other soul purposes is to work as a healer so while i'm working as a writer to bring this spiritual activist voice out to be a catalyst for soul grooves so groove i like that so grooving so growth is what i was going to say um and i'm doing that very much in my own theater i also f- feel very very precious about bringing forth the healing aspect of storytelling and ensuring that i'm always offering healing work alongside my theater work either one to one or in some bigger capacity when we get there inside spaces is healing containers for these um, cataclysmic stories and soul activations that are being brought forward because this is kind of what I came here to do be all about soul growth soul awareness and about the 5d trajectory which is getting to be a much higher being and understanding the multi-dimensional realms that we have access to and not only going on the ascension path of ascending up into love and light and bliss but actually feeling into the earth and the reality here and the density and getting the nourishment that was rightfully ours on earth because it wasn't meant to be like this it wasn't meant to be this hard or this much of a, a control state, what I feel is a very sort of trapped society. It was meant to be the way that we weren't, that we had to really fight and have a dark night of the soul to even figure out that we've got a soul. It wasn't meant to be that, you know, all the knowledge was hidden from us and the the teachings, the pure teachings were stolen and the people that carried them destroyed. That wasn't part of the plan and I feel that that's always what I bring forward about karma when people say you know what you reap you sow but I feel like this earth has been subject to a breaking of free will um, and an abuse of it really and that's why yeah that we don't actually uh, have these fair rules of karma because we are subject to a control matrix that's uh, a drop consciousness that's holding our earth into place that we need to break free of and fully see through the illusion that we're placed under because I heard someone say today that the paranormal is the reality and the reality that we think of is the illusion and I found that a wonderful way of looking at things and really understanding things that actually this supernatural this sixth sense this channeling this spiritual ability of seeing through the veil is the reality and we've been trained to think the other way that oh my god no it's only this physical body that's it it's only what i can see with my eyes it's only what i can read in a book that is reality it's only what they teach me on in school or on screen that's not reality (laughs) i think we've all had to go through that learning that's not reality you know the reality of being told what our bodies are and aren't capable of and that we've got to um take this pill to take away this pain when pain is always trying to tell us something it's telling us there's an unrest and that leads me back round to a spiritual crisis a spiritual crisis is telling you that there is an unrest in your spiritual body it's telling you to go a little bit deeper, get a bit more curious and wrestle with your own soul's truth. Because for many of us, uh, 
uh, soul's lineage, their soul's truth isn't to be found out there. And there might be some amazing people bringing it, activating you, saying things to bring this into consciousness or amazing energetic beings holding space for you to grow and to awaken to your soul. But inevitably, this soul's truth, this whole spiritual wrestle is about coming back down deep in here and figuring out what really matters and what is worth fighting for to the bitter end. And I don't mean fighting a war where people are killed. I mean fighting inside for the soul, for integrity and for really filling in what feels good and right and questioning what we've been told before and finding what's right for us. And that is a very Gnostic path. The Gnostic means to go in search for the wisdom within. Yeah, for anyone that is going through their own spiritual crisis, know that you are not alone and the other side of it is something bigger, braver and more beautiful and really helping you to step into your purpose because you are needed in the world right now. <laughs> so getting comfortable, you can lay down or sit with your spine as straight as possible and closing your eyes and coming into your body and I want you to take your attention to your breath and breathe in and out deeply really enjoying the breath rise through the body and expanding and the release slowing everything down to breathe in and out as an act of luxury space time and opening inside your sacred temple your body this life force running through your veins your body your breath giving you life and once you settled in your body I want you to put your attention on anywhere that is emanating pain aching tightness and sending breath into this space Put your attention on this area, this space, this place and you can lay a hand on it and direct the breath and emanate healing, light, energy into this space. Give it all of your mindfulness, all of your attention right here, right now and ask that pain to speak what needs to be released, healed, nurtured. Is there any pent up rage or anger, frustration, grief, laying in the body? Is it crying out for nourishment, sacred touch, awareness, listening? So taking time now to focus in on your sacred temple, your body and listen. And if you need to stretch, move, massage or hold any part of your body that is crying out for a tantric union with you, then cradle, touch, caress that part of your body. Give yourself the comfort of a stroke, 
a massage of movement that brings in this healing light and energy of flow. And now I want you to tap into a part of your body that is feeling pleasure, joy or excitement. Look deep within your gut, your feet, your hands, is there tingling anywhere? Your heart, is it beating? Is your mind creating worlds of colour and light and new thoughts, new possibilities and let that drop in to the space inside your body temple. Let that drop into the space inside your body temple that is luxurious, sensual and pleasurable. And this could feel like tingling, a higher vibration, a lightness. And we're so not used to feeling into this tender, liquid light of ours, this joyous essence. So I want you to animate that feeling wherever you found it, animate it throughout the body, through the feet, through your mind and expand it out. This is you, you temple of light, you tantric being, meaning union with the soul light, your light, your soul. And from this vibrant space, this higher frequency now, connect in multi-dimensionally with something around you. Maybe you want to connect in with a beautiful sacred space in nature, a tree. Maybe you want to connect in with a loved one that you have been missing or that's been on your mind. Maybe you want to connect in with a deeper, wiser part of your soul, your higher self, or the cosmos, the planetary system, or higher, the source of all that is. And feel into that. And connect with a spirit that brings you joy, an essence, a land, a person, place, space, frequency. These are all light beings as you are a being of light, a soul, a higher soul a spirit, a frequency and all you're doing now is trying to match the frequency of a multi-dimensional being. That simply means someone that's not in the physical or if they do appear in the physical like taking your imagination to a tree or even a friend, a partner, go beyond how they appear in this 3D realm and tap into a deeper part of them, their soul's consciousness and connect with them there. What are they trying to tell you? How are they trying to reach you? Trust in this divine frequency you will be guided, you will be nourished, you will be connected to any frequency you wish.
and now coming back into the body putting your attention back on any pains there still is in your body and focusing on that ache or that pain or that sadness or that heaviness or shadow scan your body your auric field is there any attachment to that pain is there any cords running out of that pain is there any being in this realm or multidimensionally that's attached through a vortex, through a spiral, through a cording. And this is seen as darker energy. And I ask you the question, do you want that being, that shadow, that heaviness attached to your energy? Really scan with your mind's eye, your third eye inside your body, your temple, and around it in your auric field. And if that entity, that shadow, that being, that energy is weighing you down, then I'm going to give you a gift of releasing it. You do not need to hold on to it anymore. You can cut the cords to spiritual sovereignty and freedom. And if there is a contract or a learning or a lesson you want to learn from this pain, from this attachment to this person, to this earthbound spirit even, then ask. And then command that it leaves your energy now. And now scanning your body inside and around it again, you know what the higher light feels like, the higher frequency, the spiritual consciousness of all that is, you know what it feels like to tap into a dropped consciousness, the astral realm, and you know what it's like to live in a 3D matrix. In this short experience you've experienced 3D, 4D and 5D, and you choose which one to tap into. And with that knowledge, raising your consciousness up to the highest connection of light. Asking that light to fill in any holes or rips or tears in your aura from your release work. Pulling in more of that light as much as you need down your chakra column in through your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, your stomach, your lower stomach, out through your legs, into the earth and nourishing you back up again and charging your energy up faster, higher, more expansive, more strength, more light, see yourself float above the matrix of 3D reality, see yourself detached from any negative entities, energies, thought forms or programs. And there's this higher light, winged consciousness that floats above it all, in this totally different density and frequency of smooth sailing spirituality, tapping into this liquid light being that you now are. If you have a question about your own spiritual journey, 
how to touch into this frequency and how to channel the light or heal your own spiritual reckoning from this space speak to your soul and see what wisdom it has for you And now gently connecting with that soul super body of yours, that spiritual warrior of light. Pulling down any golden liquid light energy that you need into your body. Soothing any parts of your body that have been weakened along your path in life that have been asking for more of this light frequency in the body putting it in nourishing the body temple with your soul light now and with big gratitude for the love and healing that you've given yourself today and the connection you've had with your soul you awake and stretch slowly coming back into this space, this time, this reality with a tingling feeling of higher light. <laughs>